my dear brothers and sisters again a warm welcome to one and all present over here we all are going to be a part of a, a three day three hours revision on indirect taxation ca intermediary level guys this opportunity you have to gear up to hone your skills towards perfection and use it for optimization any specific doubts you have with respect to any of the classes please uh, feel free to you know post it to me well in advance any doubt with respect to indirect taxation we are we are here to deal with this first to start up with the whole ideology the whole ambience behind this you know session revision session is to ensure that key areas are addressed and uh, if at all you have you have been following the you know few of my presentations last week i have given a presentation on how to go about last week thank you thank you so much my dear abhinav last week we have actually you know given a presentation on how to prepare for this may 22 examination and i'm just following the same my dear i'm giving you the pick areas important areas i am again refraining from saying all other areas are not important no all other areas i would say less priority everything is important for the examination but the manner in which you revise have to slightly take a otherwise so today first i would say how to go about the preparation towards the examination day before one and a half days before examination after completing the previous paper how we have to prepare yourself for the paper for direct tax and indirect tax collectively and direct tax part shri ram sir will be taking or some other person will be you know guiding you accordingly so direct tax i'll be you know indirect tax i'll be carrying you through first my advice will be if you are taking indirect tax start with revisioning in volume 2 complete registration tax invoice returns and payment chapter these topics first balance topics you have to see there is no second thoughts but these topics have to be you know completed first first and foremost these topics have to be completed and our revision is also going to play in the same role my dear it is the same manner in which i want to you know take through the contents as well so first up while taking the registration chapter what are all the areas we have to focus in the registration chapter my dear brothers and sisters in registration chapter first hint will be validity of registration that is to say threshold limit calculation threshold limit calculation is the first and foremost priority and uh, let me start up with you know basics so my dear brothers and sisters this is where you know the, the basics goes first registration topic is what is a threshold limit for one's registration and for this i will i'll present you a simple summary like this is a table which you can use it for this is the table which you can use it for threshold limit registration sir if you are belonging to mmnt states manipur mizoram meghala mega nagaland and tripura mmnt manipur mizoram nagaland tripura the registration threshold limit will be 10 lakh whether you do goods or services or both does not matter if you are operating in if you are having a place of business and if you are want to register the threshold limit of these mmnt states is 10 lakhs first and foremost thing other than this mmnt states other than this mmnt states which is called as other than special category states the threshold limit the threshold limit will be 20 lakhs again the question comes sir this 20 lakhs is for what goods or services are both logically speaking goods and services are both but if you are exclusive dealer in supply of goods if you are exclusive dealer in supply of goods barring only one exception one exception which can be tested in mcq is you can be the supplier of an one exempt supply which is specifically not considered as acting as a supplier of service which is loans and advances loans and advances the consideration for which is in terms of interest or discount except credit card discount that is the only service you can do but even if you do that you are entitled for claiming as exclusive supplier of goods as exclusive supplier of goods this particular service what i am talking about that is service by way of loans and advances service by way of loans and advances followed by followed by what consideration for which is given in terms of interest or discount 
this particular service has got a special waiver first in composition scheme first in composition scheme and if you are mindful in composition scheme in composition scheme the service apart from the mainstream service provided under 10 subsection 1 is this particular service therefore you are allowed to be you know do opt for composition scheme when you opt for incidental or ancillary services in excess of you know 5 lakh rupees or 10 percent of the turnover in the state this limit is considered and while calculating that limit also this particular service is excluded same way when you come for registration when you come for registration also this particular service got excluded and for your kind information when you go to input tax credit chapter and when you calculate rule 42 rule 43 exemption for the purpose of rule 42 43 this particular service provided by other than banker financial institutions is also considered as not exempt that is it is to be treated as taxable only if the service is provided by bank or financial institution ndfc it is treated as exempt so this particular service has got you know unique thread of you know exemptions wherever we go across so mark it very very important in three places the service is given special treatment one is in composition scheme second one is in registration chapter when exclusive to supplier of goods has been dealt with and third scenario while calculating exempt supply as per rule 42 43 in the itc chapter very very important market important my dear if you are exclusive supplier of goods and if you are remaining in mmnt states your fate remains same only 10 lakhs and if you are if you are remaining in any other states in pan must states minus mmnt see actually they are specifying 10 states pan m u s t t pan must see pan is a 10 digit number right so pan must must na m u s t thana sir or no but m m m u s t so typically what i am trying to you know do is that i am trying to build this i am trying to build this as a 10 letter word so that i could easily you know correlate and keep in mind pan is must for filing income tax return that way if you keep it up in this pan must what i am supposed to do sir in this pan must if i reduce m m n t see MMNT, we know what it is Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura. See, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura always comes as 10 lakhs category. Apart from this, so reduce this MMNT. Probably I would say if I strike down these two concepts, if I strike down these two areas over here, MMNT, uh, probably, okay. So we will calculate this way 2M is to be strike down and uh, nt is has to be strike dot so if we strike down this mitre and one t if i strike down what is the other state stands for manipur nagaland manipur mizoram tripura is strike down where is what is the balance in the pan master puducherry arunachal pradesh meghalaya uttarakhand sikkim telangana in the six states, if you operate, the threshold limit, if you are dealing only in goods, your registration limit is only 20 lakhs. In other states, say for example, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Kerala, Goa, Pondicherry, uh, Pondicherry comes there, okay. Tamil Nadu, Kar Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, all these states, if you are dealing only in goods, then your threshold limit is 40 lakhs. But you are supposed to satisfy few more conditions. What are the conditions? Point number one, you should deal only in. Point number one, you should deal only in exclusive goods. Point number two, you should deal. You should deal other than in pan master states. Point number three, you should not deal in sin goods. Sin goods is considered as i pad goods. Ice cream, pan masala, aerated waters, and tobacco. I pat. I used to call it as i pat. I stands for ice cream. P stands for pan masala. A stands for aerated waters, T stands for tobacco. My dear, all these four are cancer causing agent. Sir, what did you say? Ice cream and pan masala. Pan masala, tobacco, we can understand cancer causing agent because we are seeing, you know, movies. Love. Mukesh is coming and updating this information to us. You have seen Mukesh, no? Yepir <coughs> Mukesh. For advertisement will come, no, for cancer. You have learned through, you know, Mukesh. Pan masala, tobacco is. How come this... How come this ice cream and uh, aerated waters? What is aerated waters? Toilet cleaning acids. Sir, how come toilet cleaning acids, sir? Yes, my dear. Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Miranda, 7-Up, Thumbs-Up. What is this all? 
you pour it in your toilet even harpic will not clean it that good check it out rust can be removed using these substances and even the poisonous snake or poisonous scorpion will die if you put and if it allow it you allow it to you know you know allow that to swim in this you know toilet cleaning acid it will die i'm not joking these are all available you have to go and do the fact check for this sir how come it will cause cancer sir my dear 300 to 500 ml of pepsi coca cola whatever you drink it add up to 48 teaspoons of sugar 48 teaspoons of calorie okay 48 teaspoons of calorie it requires how many days for me to burn sir if you work out in a gym for one and a half hours it is 9 days work out are you going and working out in a gym for 9 days after drinking the pepsi and coke in theater definitely no what it will lead sir it will lead to imbalancing you know fat depositing in your body what will happen sir thighs bum and all will be will become extraordinarily big disproportionate to your body size what it will lead to sir it will lead to metabolism imbalancing oh what it lead to metabolism imbalancing sir it will lead to cell mutation slowly what cell mutation will lead us to sir cancer thread connecting thread so that is i should appreciate the government when they co- they have grouped this ipad together what a sensible grouping they have extraordinarily done ice cream sir how come ice cream sir there is a petrochemical which is used in the car radiator is used in the ice cream manufacturing that is why when you go to the ice cream shop they are able to give it like a ball but think no in your refrigerator home refrigerator it is becoming rock solid how come ice cream parlor ice cream dabba la it becomes a ball not possible no so you have to be careful okay so ipad goods my dear brothers and sisters my humble request is with fold and hand avoid eating ice cream gulfi eat avoid drinking this aerated waters which i call it as toilet cleaning assets sir what shall i drink then sir drink tender coconut drink juice without sugar and ice drink you know can juice which is available outside very clearly drink drink buttermilk lot drink lassi lot these are all good but please avoid this aerated drinks it is not good for you my dear and i am also cautioning you guys metabolism imbalancing also has an impact in your reproductive organs it will create a greater problem of infertility in you today see if you listen to fm radio in chennai for in between every song two to three advertisements come from infertility center reason is more number of kids are drinking this toilet cleaning assets more number of kids are drinking toilet cleaning assets more fertility centers are they are opening you can correlate to the facts you can correlate to the facts problem is no doctor is opening up and saying this fact parents are unaware of this fact because of the pressure from you they are giving i am telling you before doing this research and getting to know the background about toilet cleaning acids and ice creams which are two biggest agents of infertility and cancer i was i was a staunch eater of amul ice cream then i dropped it i was a, a vehement drinker or fa- i can call me even fanatic when you when it comes to coca cola before 2011 and from that day i have been making see from 2010 i have been into the exclusive teaching of indirect taxation my teaching career started way before that with respect to 2007 from 2011 when i audited this companies when i exposed to this reality i am creating a strong awareness with respect to in between my dear you know younger generation you my dear beloved brothers and sisters very strongly to avoid this please don't go for this this has a greater price for you to pay which is the peace of your life kindly avoid them kindly avoid them kindly avoid them sir once in a year can i do sir do it okay once in a year okay acceptable not even once in a while not even once in a month not even once in six months please carry lot of sense please carry accountability towards yourself that's very very important now my dear brothers and sisters having completed this we are completing the conditions also look at this you are not supposed to have taken compulsory registration you are not supposed to have man dealing in ipad goods you are not supposed to be in pan master states and you should not have taken even voluntary registration when these conditions are satisfied and if you are operating in other states your threshold limit for registration is 40 lakhs my dear mark my words 
this can be an mcq or this can be a stand alone four mark case study question guys are you all with me which can follow will your answer be different if he is also the provider of service or if you are staying in other state that can be a question of that sort guys are you all comfortable everybody shall we go to the next one my dear see i am not dealing with the registration chapter in full but i am dealing with the main aspects okay first criteria there is calculation of threshold limit there is a probable question from threshold limit mark it very 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 important we are going for the next one we are going for the next one here we go my dear here we go next one is aadhar authentication process my dear brothers and sisters when we go for aadhar authentication that is prerequisites for getting the registration pan number is one of the prerequisite for making registration and i am sure you all will be aware of if let's assume sita raman is in tamil nadu i am put up in tamil nadu i am a resident in tamil nadu and i am making the supply from tamil nadu the place from where the supply is made the state from where the supply is made this is where i am supposed to get registered this is where i am supposed to get registered and my dear brothers and sisters please appreciate please appreciate please appreciate i will be making the application for registration with tamil nadu state government authority because my supply is from the state of tamil nadu so from wherever you make a supply you have to make the application in the respective state meaning thereby gst is a state registration sir suppose let us understand this way pooja sister wants to operate in all the 36 states sir. that is to say 28 states plus 8 union territories she wants to operate by having the branch very simple she has to take 36 registration because first two digits of the gst and refers to state code state code so our sister have to make an application fresh with every state government authority in addition to that within the state multiple registration whether one have to take sir answer is yes if you want to register as input service distributor or if you want to operate in the scz unit of the respective state for example sir let us take pooja sister is in chennai she is having her office in chennai and she wants to operate in chennai ku miga arigil sri perumbudur appa kanji prame pa chennai ku miga arigil raanga pa so sri perumbudur la she wants to operate yeah let us understand this way sri perumbudur sc is the sister wants to have a office my dear brothers and sisters tell me whether sri perumbudur is within tamil nadu as per postal address nevertheless even though it is within the state sister is required to take a separate registration for scz guys are you comfortable sir sister is also having a branch in madurai coimbatore dindigal and all sir whether she requires to take a separate registration no that is optional that is her choice but if she wants to operate as input service distributor and if she wants to operate as a scz operator it is a compulsory separate registration and for every registration sister has to submit all the details separately all kyc all other authentication everything she has to do separately guys are you all with me are you comfortable so registration chapter first we are picking why pa somewhere around 5 to 8 marks is coming from registration chapter repeatedly so we are focusing more in this area first we worked out on the threshold limit then we are working on the process 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 where to how much registration completed next how to make the application and how to validate it that is when aadhar authentication comes into picture my dear brothers and sisters here we go very very important amendment aadhar is required and aadhar is not required for whom see government has notified with effect from 23 12 to 2000 you know 21 aadhar is not required for these people it can be an mcq or it can be a stand alone four mark question or three mark question mark it important aadhar is not required for whom pan is compulsory apart from pan today aadhar is also compulsory aadhar is not required for whom person who is not the indian citizen and government departments and you know you unique identity number holders for this three people it is not required sir what sir six is given you have you have said only three first one non resident is not a citizen of india for them aadhar is not required all government departments all these things i can categorize as government establishment of central government and state government local authority statutory body 
and public sector are taking for all these four people it is not there and finally person who is having a uin just like embassies consulates uh, united nations organizations unicef unesco world bank and all these people for them it is not required for them it is not required my dear brothers and sisters mark it important six points straight away four mark area in the examination four mark or three mark area very 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 interesting area mark it important for these guys aadhar is not required sir apo for all others aadhar is required sir yes aadhar is required sir what if if aadhar is uh, not given at the time of registration one second my dear let me carry out this content okay Aadhar is mandatory to be given, sir. Based on Aadhar authentication only, your registration is now validated, sir. How to go for validation of registration, sir? I will take you through, my dear. See, while making the application itself, while making the application itself, Aadhar authentication has to be made. And my dear brothers and sisters, I should make a small correction here. It is not here. It is business information and. Aadhaar authentication. I should say that way because it is uh, it is along with that way and Aadhaar authentication, which is optional. And sir, if Aadhaar is not authenticated, what will happen, sir? If Aadhaar is not authenticated, my dear, then resultant will be different. So let's go ahead and analyze what will happen if Aadhaar is given, if Aadhaar is not given. My dear brothers and sisters, focus here. If Aadhaar is authenticated, if Aadhaar is authenticated at the time, if Aadhaar is authenticated at the time of you know, uh, at the time of making application itself, from the date of acknowledgement of GST REG two within seven working days, previously three, now it is seven. Within seven working days, department will. check verify and they have to come back and give your feedbacks they have to give their feedbacks what they will do see within 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 seven working days after verification of the application if they are satisfied they will grant the registration if they are not satisfied they will issue they will issue a show cause notice and you are bound to reply for the show cause notice within seven working days if you fail to reply application will be rejected no sir i have replied sir then proper officer from the date of receipt of reply within seven working days he has to verify and he has to come back with his option saying whether he is satisfied or not satisfied my dear if he is satisfied he will grant the registration if he is not satisfied he will not grant the registration and sir this is for aadhar authentication is done what if aadhar authentication is not done my dear if aadhar authentication is not done registration shall still be granted listen to the theoretical approach sir why you say practically this is not there theoretically it is there that is why i am giving theoretically for the examination purpose please understand registration can still be granted if you are not done with aadhar authentication provided with the prior permission taken from the officer not below the rank of ac we have to carry out the verification within 30 days either a physical verification after taking prior permission from the officer not below the rank of jc we have to go and we have to conduct the physical verification in the presence of the owner or the proprietor or the person in charge of the business in the principal place of business and if if i don't want to go for the physical verification i can all i can call for for other documentations i can call for for other documentations which is going to prove see why what is basically this aadhar bio geometric evidence who am i where i am from bio geometric evidence so my dear this for validating this they can ask for any other document to substantiate and if you provided that within 30 days they will actually if they verify if they satisfied they will grant you the registration if they are not satisfied same schema they will issue the show cause notice and if they are not satisfied oh sorry then proper officer have to you know you have to make a reply within 7 working days proper officer have to consider the reply within 7 working days and if he is satisfied grants registration if he is not satisfied he will reject the application my dear you have to also understand in any one of the schema if the assc fails application will be rejected and in any one of the schema if the proper officer fails then it is a deemed registration look at this my dear 
look at this deemed registration if application on clarification submitted deemed have been approved if the proper officer fails if the proper officer fails if the proper officer fails to take the action so on an application submitted with aadhar authentication within 7 days he has not responded application is deemed to have been granted and sir aadhar authentication is not completed but within 30 days proper officer has not verified then also application is deemed to have been completed registration is deemed to be and granted and after submitting clarification proper officer has not responded then also application is deemed to have been accepted registration shall be granted so my dear brothers and sisters mark aadhar authentication process very very important based on whether you have done the aadhar authentication or not the process of granting registration differs my dear brothers and sisters are you all comfortable everybody it's just flow of information nothing more than that everyone thank you surender excellent puja sister thank you so much ya yeah. mega thank you ya yeah. everybody excellent guys i am having only limited view to the chat box and uh, thank you arshna sister pavitra excellent anurag sir. jayant excellent yeah thank you so sir, much will you give this notes to us sir uh you want notes also to be done my dear see uh, i have no hesitation in sharing i will share the notes okay since you asked i will share the notes through coordinator but answer my question we are in the revision class you have already done the class right yes yes and uh, see my dear let me say this way the manner in which i am presenting the information may differ but information you would have already read it somewhere thank you jeeragan right see i totally believe in this it is not the number of materials you refer will give you success it is one material how many time you read will grant you success i have no hesitation my dear i will happily share because this entire content is to my dear beloved brothers and sisters for you only i will share but if at all you are preparing you do it and if you are feeling comfortable do it but don't change the base material in which you have done the preparation because that will delay your revision process are you with me my dear whoever is asked for i am so happy you have unmuted yourself and you have spoken and i am really thankful please be vocal please be participative and uh, i i actually hide it the chat box because chat box is a kind of deviation for me because people used to type all the lengthy things i have to sit and read on those so i have i have just hide it the chat box so my dear being a revision course i want to be very intense i want to be very focused i want to be purpose driven certainly i will share my dear since you ask for okay, you, i will you, share so initially i didn't carry the intention of sharing this material with you because my thought processes you all have already prepared you are coming for the examination key area revision with me this is what my thought process was and now i understand since you ask for i understand i can share this material to you don't hurry bury or rush in control c control v be clear with the concept concept teliva padichukonga pa content na share pandren padinge revise pannunga are you all comfortable mou is okay yes sir yes sir yes sir okay my dear okay but again with the caution only i am giving the caution is any new content you start it will take some time okay so it is advisable to revise one material thousand time rather than referring to thousand materials i follow the simple and i am telling you the moment you take away these my notes from me and you ask me to carry on i can carry on no issues because these contents are here but if you give me other set of notes some others notes or ca institute material itself for that matter if you ask me to take in that through i will be you know finding a tough time you know why because my eyes is referring to a my brain is reading a new content same no it's a new content for me see essence of the content will be same what rule 9 institute material has to say what rule 9 sita raman has to say what rule 9 in any other indirect taxation faculty have to say in this world the same content correct or not this yes, only the presentation matters i believe in pictorial representations reason is very simple 
anything you view like this pictorial representation you will get to gain the flow of subject or a natural flow irukum ungalku manappaanam panna kashtapada maatinga you will not struggle to memorize content rather than you will have a fountain flow oh what is this next what is this next? because our brain has been equipped in such a way reading paragraphs oda reading the charts brain find it more graspable are you with me my dear see all my notes will only be in this form full of chat materials and if you rush through no you can see it will be you no know, most of the cases it will be charts 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 everywhere you go it will be full of charts now tables charts table charts table charts table charts i'm i'm specifically done all my contents in this way everything i have a purpose in doing purpose is what creating a impact in your mind and that is possible only if you guys are involving into the content and that is possible if it gets material gets attracts your view so this is the whole objective so my dear in my objective in my objective i am completing two important aspects first a threshold limit i have covered you second one i have covered the other authentication shall we go to the effective date of registration yes sir yes thank you vijay raghavan thank you so much we are going for the effective date of registration my dear effective date of registration can be linked with revised tax invoice have it deeper in you have it deeper in you let's go for revised tax and effective date look at this my dear what is the effective date of registration if the application for the grant of registration is made within 30 days or after 30 days that's a question sir a law abiding assessor makes an application within 30 days then registration is effective retrospectively then registration is effective retrospectively from the date of becoming liable from the date of becoming liable let me give you example let's understand vijay raghavan is liable today 29th march he became liable he makes an application on 20th of april he makes an application on 20th of april is it within 30 days my dear my dear brothers and sisters is it within 30 days yes sir everybody please be vocal and yes, unmute yourselves participate speak yes, okay yes, now, please yes, yes sir now, yeah thank you now since application is made within 30 days let us understand proper officer process this issue show cause notice gets a reply and after that validates the reply after that satisfy he grants a registration on 10th of may the if date of regist date of grant of registration is what day 10th of may may the gst ayan of vijay raghavan comes into effect on what day 10th of may but effective from what day that is applicable that is forceful from what day from 29th of march why sir retrospective effect retrospective effect because vijay raghavan is a very good law abiding assessee he has made the application within 30 days 30 days my dear one small hint i have to drop you be very careful 30 days from the date of becoming liable okay and i told you date of becoming liable to register is 29 03 now you will calculate 30 days from what day from 29 that is where vijay raghavan you have to make a change you have to calculate from 30th from 30th march onwards because 29 you are not supposed to include why sir interpretation of statutes okay we are going with the general clauses act for the word from from is not defined in the gst law whereas when we go and refer to the general clauses act there they have said from means from the next day for all the due date calculation apply this thumb rule sir what do you mean by all the due date calculation including for time of supply time of supply la you have to issue invoice within the specified time limit right yes sir especially for services yes, especially for services within 30 days from the date of completion of service within 45 days if you are a bank or financial institution nbfc and all those stuffs yes sir right and here in G- in in the registration chapter you will have lot of thumb rules lot of thumb rules and my dear wherever in registration chapter you have to calculate from that date from this date abdina calculate from the next day 
see excel wise when you go it will be perfect see emotionally you are saying this 2903 2022 let's understand and if you take this as one day my dear brothers and sisters look at this i am dragging this for 30 days it will not be the case see simple calculation sir excel i am doing sir look at this it says 28.4 correct ah my dear brothers and sisters this day plus 30 days 28.4 correct ah the last yes, day within which Vijay Ragon has to make an application is 28.4 now you should ask me a question sir you said you are not supposed to include this day then how come you said 28 is correct because 28 is calculated only from this day no, correct my dear this is what the difference between excel and human sense look at this last day will be calculated as only 27 whereas calculation of this day plus 30 day gave you what uh, 28. 28 that is why i am saying please calculate the first day following the general class act from this day and my dear if you calculate from this day please appreciate 30th day will be next day are you all with me my dear are you comfortable this you have to follow the entire gst law wherever from is spoken you have to apply this exception is interest calculation chapter exception is interest calculation and late fee calculation interest calculation and late fee calculation from the next day of the due date in Soluanga. they will be using the term from the next day to the, of the due date there you calculate the next day to due date no issues sir due date is let us assume 20th march 2022 sir that is the due date for payment of tax due date for filing gstr 3b as per section 39 subsection 6 which says the due date for payment of taxes due date of filing the returns so therefore 20th march 2022 is a due date fine from what day i should calculate interest because tax is paid on 30th of march 2022 tax is paid i should calculate interest from what day to what day from the next day of the due date here you have to give the actual understanding what is the next day of the due date from that day so he this is the only exception you have to be mindful my dear brothers and sisters this is not great understanding required simple thumb rule Barring interest and late fee, wherever from comes, go for the next day onwards. Is it loud and clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My dear beloveds, come on. Be like a, you know, firing bullets. Yeah, come on. You should be, you know, answering like chak 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 chak. If you want to answer, slow over. Come on, my dear, come on. You guys are 15 years younger to me. How much should be your energy level? Come on, yeah. Be active, be active, be active participant, be active participant. Now tell me, my dear, are you all comfortable? See, these are some intricacies which book will not teach you. You go and check the book. Go and check everywhere. Any author for that matter, I'm telling you. Anna, ICA material has clearly captured this. All the calculations, they have clearly given the explanation from this date to this date they calculated and they have given the dates. This is the beauty of ISM. You should, this is why I always urge, sir, you are having your own material, you are having your own book. My book is only a guide. Whereas the success factor is institute material. You have to read the institute study material. You have to practice the illustrations there. You have to practice the RTPs. You have to write the mock test. That is the source and secret of success. Sir, you are speaking on behalf of the institute, sir. If I am not speaking, who else will speak? See, I am not against any coaching centers. I am not against any private authors. I am not against any private teachers. But I am on for your success. What most of the students we are doing, what most of my brothers and sisters, you are missing the edge, I am telling you. You registered with CA Institute. You procured the CA Institute material, but you are not using it. It is like you are going to the 12th board examination, but you will read engineering college syllabus for 12th board examination. Do you think you will get success? 
No, no sir. And finally, you will come back to play MCA instead of asking tough questions. Accounts, costing, you guys never touch ISM. Financial management, corporate law, auditing, none of the syllabus you don't touch. Ask na material is voluminous, I am not touching. Ah, CA could have voluminous. After completing CA, your earning is also going to be voluminous. Will you say, I don't want that much earning? What after completing CA, if you are, if you are employed for 1.5 lakhs per month, eh, will you go and tell your management, I don't want this much salary, uh, 10,000 is enough for me. So, living la. No, sir. My dear, remember what Abdul Kalam said, if you want to shine like a sun, first you have to burn like a sun. Get mentally prepared for that. Trust Alma Matra. Trust ICA material. Sit with the material. 30 marks MCQ is directly from the institute material. It is not going for anywhere. I am so painful to see lot of telegram groups where students are begging. Sir, some MCQ please, sir. Sir, MCQ please. Read ISM properly. Yeah? All MCQs are in ISM. I am sorry if I am harsh on you guys, my dear beloved. Please understand. My whole objective is to make you all wake up. And even today, if you start, there is enough time. I follow one statement of Hitler very strongly, my dear. According to me, except birth and death, as said by Hitler, everything is possible. Hitler's this word in Tamil, it is there. Hitler's the statement. Okay, he would have he would have given it in German, but in Tamil, that is to say, see, I was born, brought up, I was brought up from Madurai. In fact, I have undergone Tamil medium up to 10th standard. And after that only I got came to, you know, English medium for the sake of commerce. So, Nanga Padicha history. English and Tamil. Nanga Padicha history. Nanga Padicha history. Hitler not our say or Vartha Tanodea. Senegal. Mudia then but the Muttal Gali Nagaradil. People, whoever says it is not possible, those are phonetic. It is in, only in those fools' dictionary it will be there. Impossible. Nothing is impossible. Everything is possible. This is Hitler's statement except death and birth. I added the last two words because even Hitler could not control his death. <laughs> okay. So, except birth and death, that's God's blessings. Barring that, everything is controllable and everything is possible. Reading English of institute material, do you think it's difficult? Perception. Perceptional difference. My dear brothers and sisters, don't fall prey to this kind of perception. Once you grow up, you will develop the you know understanding. When I was a student, I was also gullible. I was running behind important questions and all. Only when my first examination in CA final, when I failed in three marks, I scored 397, 198 in group 1, 199 in G2. Only then I realized what mistake I have done. Then I rectified myself. And I don't want any one of my brothers and sisters to undergo that mistake. What is the mistake you have done, sir? I have not gone through the ISM. I have not practiced the institute materials, illustrations and book bags. I have not practiced the mock test and RTPs. Intra instead, I tried writing test series somewhere in the entire, you know, universe. This academy, that, that academy, that, this academy, that, nothing. End of the day, I realized I missed out on the straight scoring opportunity of RTP plus mark test minimum 15 to 20 marks. Lift, I missed it. My dear brothers and sisters, I don't want any one of you to do that. RTP and institute's current mock test you should complete on or before April 10 or maximum April 15. Remember, that should not be the new content in your hand in front of examination hall, which was the mistake I did in my first final exam. Now tell me, my dear, do I want my brothers and sisters also to commit the same mistake or this is what evolution is. If I suffer something, I should protect my next generation from my suffering. What is the correct approach? What is, what is wrong in my saying? Can you understand the significance of ISM? Everybody? Yes, sir. Please yes, sir. don't yes. underestimate ISM. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, sir, I have prepared all along in some private author. Okay, do it. Please, institute material illustrations and book bags concentrate. That you can do at least, right? You need not prepare the full subject at least now. 
at least can you focus on the illustrations and book backs can you do that if you do that yes, itself sir. you will be great yeah you will be scoring abundance in mark yeah that's what i want you guys to see you with right so i'm going for my next focus area i'm going for my next focus area which is effective date of registration which i have just completed guys are you comfortable with effective date and one probable question with effective date is advice let us understand i will say this way i will uh, put it across this way whether arunachalam can arunachalam is making an application within this 30 days what is the effective date of reg registration and the management of arunachalam wants an advice from you whether can they issue revised tax invoice yes revised tax invoice as per section 31 subsection 3 class a is possible when the application is made within 30 days so you have to go to which chapter is you have to go to you have to go to mm -hmm. tax invoice debit note credit note chapter yeah and you have to go through why it is not uh, tax invoice debit note credit note chapter yeah in which you have to come for what uh, you have to come for revised tax invoice component uh, look at this my dear brothers and sisters revised tax invoice one has to issue revised tax invoice one has to issue within a month of newly taking registration if at all you have made from the date of grant of registration my dear the wording is from the date of grant of registration i told you 10th may date of grant of registration in the case of vijay raghavan that means from what day you will calculate one month hello from 11th sir very good sister excellent 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 vandana mahendra super archana very good puja excellent from the 11th you have to calculate that yeah spot on very good excellent that is how it has to be and my dear brothers and sisters in this revised tax invoice also there is a small intricacy revised tax invoice can be issued in three scenarios point number 1 when you are newly registered and made an application point number 2 when your cancellation has been revoked revocation of cancellation happened that is to say from the date of cancellation till the date of revocation of cancellation for that period you have to issue something called revised tax invoice and if at all you result in doing any fraudulent activity then also you are supposed to do a revised tax invoice my dear in case of fraudulent activity recipient is punished with no itc have that back of mind invoice have to clearly bear a statement sir what are all the contents of revised tax invoice sir quickly have a look at the contents of revised tax invoice yeah it shall consist all the informations of tax invoices sir. in addition to that uh, it will prominently carry the word uh, revised tax invoice and it will have a reference to the original invoice date or debit note date or bill of supply date and if it is issued under 791274129130 it shall carry the word itc not admissible sir do i have to issue revised tax invoice for every invoice i have issued during that period sir answer is no look at this my dear if it is an intra state supply or inter state supply doesn't matters if the recipient is a registered one look at this if the recipient is a registered one you have to issue separate revised tax invoice for every invoice issued look at this whether it is inter or it is intra doesn't matter if the recipient is registered person you are obligated to issue what you are obligated to issue what revised separate revised tax invoice sir no sir i am making a intra state supply only but made to unregistered person say to all my brothers and sisters i am making a supply who are all unregistered sir tamil nadu da na yes sir tamil nadu da sir appo for the entire value of revised tax invoice i will issue only one sir i have made a supply to 10 people sir yeah does not matter at all i have to issue only one revised consolidated tax invoice guys are you all comfortable what is intricacies what is the beauty here sir unregistered supply made interstate ask what is that let me give you an example in this case sir i'll give you a small example okay look at this Sir, I have Pooja sister. Oh, 
ओके 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 आई हैव यू नो पूजा सिस्टर यर पूजा सिस्टर इज माई सप्लेय एंड शी इज बाउंड टू इश्यू शी इज गोइंग टू इश्यू revised tax invoice revised tax invoice and for that we are considering the facts she has made an made a supply to unregistered person and that to interstate supply so this is case 1 this is case 1 she has made a supply to kerala kerala there four recipients and all are unregistered recipient so urp going forward i will mention unregistered recipient urr okay going forward i will say kerala 4 and karnataka 3 unregistered recipient and goa she has made a supply to 5 unregistered recipient so what is the total value of all these guys supply made so total value of 3 plus 4 plus 5 total you know 7 12 supplies so total 12 unregistered recipient supply value is 2 lakhs oh up to what it can be up to 2.5 can be there up to 2.5 lakhs meaning thereby it does not exceed 2.5 lakh what sister have to do sir i have to issue revised tax invoice i have to issue revised tax invoice one for kerala revised tax invoice one for karnataka uh, leave the spelling and all that's what and one for goa that's it so state wise i have to issue revised tax invoice sir case 2 now i am presenting case 2 so same transaction sir but slight change what happens sir put together for this 12 transaction it, it has become more than 2.5 lakhs that is to say it came to 5 lakhs so oh, abdiya then what i am supposed to do sir i have to issue 12 revised tax invoices i have to issue 12 revised tax invoices my dear brothers and sisters are you comfortable everybody are you able to understand apply yourself yes sir uh, yes sir look at, the, look at the chart now look at the chart now unregistered recipient making i am making a interstate supply to an unregistered recipient and check whether the value does not exceed 2.5 lakh value does not exceed value of supply does not exceed 2.5 lakh meaning thereby up to 2.5 lakhs if it is up to 2.5 lakhs consolidated revised tax invoice state wise and no sir exceeds 2.5 lakhs then separate revised tax invoice then separate revised tax invoice my dear everything what i highlighted in yellow color is a revised tax invoice are you all comfortable everybody everybody yes. are you comfortable with revised tax invoice also i am not only touching yes. registration chapter i am also covering invoice chapter are you all comfortable revised tax invoice is a prominent four mark question guys everybody are you with me is yes, it clear sir. any yes, doubts sir. any doubts any doubts here no, no doubts sir no sir oh excellent my dear brothers and sisters that mean sir where i am heading towards look at this i have completed threshold limit aadhar authentication and effective date of registration plus revised tax invoice my dear shall i step into the last important amendment area for revocation of cancellation everybody cancellation can be okay. done see cancellation scenarios also reason for cancellation reason for why you know whether assessee can make an application for cancellation a separate four mark question can proper officer suomo to cancel registration stand alone important four mark question for which i have referred to section 29 guys are you all with me yes sir yes sir yes, look at this my dear look at the section 20 i am application for cancellation by the registered person and proper officer on his own motion suomoto go ahead to cancellation my dear it consists of somewhere around 4 plus you know 12 points 16 points this four points is a separate four mark area this 12 points is a separate four mark area wherein out of 12 if you present 7 to 8 itself you will be given full marks don't undermine the significance of theory only by reading theory taking control over it you can answer the you know provisions correctly are you all with me my dear can i go ahead with 
revocation of cancellation because cancellation procedure remains same. There is no change. SSC makes an application, proper officer will uh, verify, first he will suspend and then he will take up inquiry and then if he is satisfied, he will grant the registration for cancellation of registration and SSC voluntarily applied for registration for cancellation application, uh, no revocation is allowed. Whereas proper officer for non compliance out of any of the 12 grounds cancels a registration, cancels a registration, and the reason being non payment of tax and non filing of return, you can go for a revocation of cancellation. Guys, are you with me? Yes, is that sir. Clear? yes, sir. And since there is a time limit for revocation of cancellation which is amended, that is a focus area. That is a focus area for revocation of cancellation revocation of cancellation where it is oh this is amendment yeah this is cancellation application this is cancellation application revocation of cancel ah here we go revocation of cancellation my dear brothers and sisters revocation of cancellation from the date of cancellation order within 30 days from the date of service of revoc cancellation order you can make an application for revocation of cancellation to whom sir you have to make an application within 30 days to the proper officer let me give this hierarchy so that it will be clear and comfortable for you look at this revocation of cancellation hierarchy look at this Sir, 0 to 30 days. 0 to 30 days. My dear, if it is 0 to 30 days, you can make an application to the cancellation authority. Cancellation officer, proper officer, you can call. Sir, okay, sir. 30 to, th sorry, not 30. 31 to 60 days. Can I still go, sir? Because 30 days has exceeded. Because what is the law said? Application for revocation of cancellation can be made to the proper officer within... 30 days that means 0 to 30 days you can make application with the cancellation officer who is also called as a proper officer are you all with me my dear who yes, is a proper who is a proper officer yes, in reality he will be superintendent he will be superintendent most of the cases he will be superintendent okay and uh, sir if i have not made an application to 30 to 0 to 30 days what will happen sir can I make an application? Yes, but this time you can make to AC or JC. AC or JC. Additional or joint commissioner. Additional or joint commissioner, you can make an application. They will condone the delay and they will grant you the registration. No, sir, even that within the time limit, I have not done, sir. What I am supposed to do, sir? Do it with 61 to 90 days. You can do it with the commissioner. Beyond this, sir, is there a way out for revocation of cancellation? Answer is no. Answer is no. You are bound to suffer. Guys, are you all with me? This is what the latest amendment is also. If you could see, I would have given it in the italics and bold. Okay. So, in writing by showing the sufficient cause. Yeah, this is very important. You should show the sufficient cause. You cannot simply go and say, I have the right, I can do. No, no. This is a relaxation power. Are you all with me, my dear? See, just imagine you are going in a car. Okay. You are going in a car. Right, my dear? So, is there anyone who can volunteer themselves for this example? Can I take Mahindra then? Yes, sir. Anyone who can say Mahindra, feel Panakura the prong. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. okay, see, Mahindra is coming in the car. It's summer, April, hot, 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 summer, hot outside. Mahindra is coming in the AC car. Mahindra, in the bus or, or in the car, what are you coming? In the bus stop, you could see a very, very pretty woman or a girl standing there and also an aged party. Yark, you will give lift there. Pa, this fellow left to pa. Very angry. Fraud fellow. 
நன்றிப்பா <laughs> 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 நன்றி <laughs> this is what i am trying to say this is what i am trying to say help will be given and let's understand that old party is asking for lift mahindra now what will you do that young lady never asked for the lift old party only asking for lift what will you do somebody who is asking you should give right logically speaking Sorry Mahindra yes, since sir. you are a bit fractionally late in your reply I played both the roles question and answer role but my dear this is what reality is all about if someone comes and ask only we have to do the help and that too if it is acceptable after analyzing whether we can do it try to understand Mahindra is rushing on his way to give blood donation for his friend who is undergoing a surgery now tell me whether he will give lift whether to pretty lady yes, or to the old lady whether he, do you think he will give you lift even i will no. not do because for me my friend's life is very important i have a purpose i will rush you are able to understand the difference in scenarios so what is very important yes sir showing sufficient cause is very very important my dear this entire world revolves around cause and effect theory please understand entire world revolves around cause and effect theory you can't simply escape you do one thing it will have an effect you put a biscuit to the dog you will have an effect you throw stones at the dog you will have a different effect <laughs> entire world is a cause and effect theory you prepare properly you use ism you practice problems you will have a reward coming which is the effect and otherwise you will get an experience this is also cause and effect but you have to be mindful about it only when there is sufficient cause is shown this extension will be granted sir or mahendra goes to the proper officer and says sir forgot to make application for revocation no revoke what is the reason yeah no reason law itself says next 30 days i can make an application go abdinga alada he will never get the revocation why because he has not shown sufficient cause practically very very important theoretically examination perspective also you need to highlight that word upon showing the sufficient cause this extension will be given guys are you with me everybody yes sir oh this yes, is sir. something which is very 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 yes, important and that i complete registration chapter my dear registration chapter la you want any other doubt i covered the latest amendment and also i covered the important areas in a important 10 mark chapter called registration or 5 to 10 marks of weightage called registration and i have also stepped into revised tax invoice my next area is tax invoice debit note credit note and e payable applicability objective is to cover amendment and very very important areas now my dear tell me any doubt in registration chapter you want me to address specifically sir registration chapter la in the add on doubt to sir tell me anything like that no sir yes sister so one small doubt sir the uh, suppliers of pan masala ice cream tobacco and dairy to drinks are they not liable for registration or they do not apply for the threshold limit sir my dear sister they are liable for registration they are also entitled for the threshold limit they are not entitled for the higher threshold limit of 40 lakhs 
they are pretty well entitled for the lower threshold limit of 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs they are entitled okay sir am i loud and clear sister yes sir thank let you let us sir. understand sarada sister is is in mmnt manipur mizoram nagaland tripura and she wants to operate in ipat 10 lakhs will be the limit clear sister yes sir you want to sir. you want to actually you know work operate on ipad ipad is also goods only right tobacco pan masala ice cream and uh, aerated drinks all are goods right nothing is service yes, here yes. so you do it in any other states apart from mmnt your limit is restricted only to 20 20 lakhs and remember if you are an mmnt if you are a ipad manufacturer you cannot opt for composition scheme also when you okay, register sir. okay you have to opt only for normal scheme you can only be governed by section 9 you can never go under section 10 is it loud yes. and clear sister yes sir but you will register only upon crossing threshold limit mmnt states 10 lakh other than mmnt states 20 lakh 20 lakh okay sir let us yeah let us assume sharda sir. sister is a mobile 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 dealer in tamil nadu What is Sharda sister's registration limit? Is she is mobile? Is mobile an iPad goods? Not forty lakhs. Forty lakhs. Ah, assuming only in mobile, right, my dear? Sir, so long, Papa. Yes. Sir, in the related to the Sharda question, my dear. So, Sundaresan, your your voice is breaking. Your your voice coming like you know from you know alien speak, Mary. Oh, 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 oh. No, no problem. No, is it is it clear? I'm closer to the mic. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Please, I will focus. I will focus. Come. So uh, the uh, threshold limit for the iPad is for the manufacturers or resellers because manufacturers. One second. The threshold limit of for registered. See when it goes to composition scheme supplier scheme, I was very clearly saying manufacturer. I use the word manufacturer of iPad only for composition scheme, right? Okay. okay. Yes, sir. When it comes to registration chapter, even dealing in compo, even dealing in iPad goods gets this restriction of twenty lakhs only. Suppose let us take this way. Sundar Asian is having the FMCG shop, fast moving consumer goods shop, which is nothing but Sundar Asian supermarket. In that supermarket, Sundar Asian is having iPad goods. Sorry, Sundar Asian sir, threshold limit is restricted to only. Twenty lakhs or ten lakhs, as the case may be. Are you with me, Sundarajan? Because look at the condition. Come here. Hello, Siddhartha. Hello, pa. Hello, pa. Okay, come on. Doubt then. Under such a gate, run up, pa. All are nikhe gorada the. Hmm. Inge paranga. Enna solranga paranga. Enna solranga notification number ten bar two thousand nineteen, which is granting the exemption for the higher threshold limit. Adle enna solranga paranga person engaged in making supplies of iPad goods manufacturing the varthi solranga. Okay, okay. Sundaresan, what is the word they are using? Garlic, sir. Garlic, sir. Is it clear? So Sundaresan okay, supermarket having iPad goods in the supermarket. Is restricted by even it is in Tamil Nadu, sir. All goods, sir. Supermarket la no services provided, sir. All goods, sir. All FMCG goods, sir. Still, Sundarayan is liable to register upon crossing the threshold limit of twenty lakhs. Assuming he is in Tamil Nadu, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Shall we go for the next one, my dear? Any doubts? Any any other doubts in registration? But Tayanga me idu arnal keringa. Illa revise pante naale konde kele keringla. I am happy. I am so happy to take up the question even tomorrow with respect to registration or tax and wise debit note credit note chapter. My objective is to ensure your doubts are addressed. Guys, key areas of registration chapter along with amendments is over. Any doubts? Any further questions? Guys, I have got a question. Okay. The question what I have got, the question what I have got is, sir, can you explain the provisions of twenty five, na twenty nine subsection five and twenty nine subsection six? See, section twenty nine talks about cancellation of registration, 
25 talks about the liability which is engulfing on a person upon cancellation you will ask me sir cancellation is my rights no i can do no right you can do but the stocks lying with you is deemed to be supplied the stocks lying with you is uh, deemed to be supplied where is the root for this sir section 7 subsection 1 capital a section 7 subsection 1 capital a read with schedule 2 para number 4 clause b my dear brothers and sisters if at all i have to put you across in a very clear manner for this i'll go to the cgst act look at the cgst act i am going to schedule number 2 in that look at para number look at para number a okay and para number b para number b is with respect to service so i am ignoring the clause b para number a and para number c is very important that's why i said clause c coming into the picture here especially para 4c look at this sorry erroneously i mentioned class b now class c class c is the correct one numbers reference is not important content is important focus more sir you have done the mistake no 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 my dear see even for me mistakes happens for you also it is bound to happen institute does not requires numbers paragraph reference and all okay institute requires correct answer now where is the origin for 295 why liability is casted in 295 after reading this if you go there you will understand 295 if not you cannot understand 295 origin for 295 is schedule 2 para 4 class c where any person ceases to be a taxable person meaning thereby when a registered person gives up his registration cancellation of registration happens any goods forming part of the asset of the business carried on by him that means any any goods including raw materials and finished goods and capital goods shall be deemed to be supplied by him look at the wording used by the law shall be deemed to be supplied by him in the course of furtherance of his business immediately before he ceases to be a taxable person my dear let us understand an example and uh, which brother asked this question here my dear your name please sir i am achu simbulal achu okay okay my sister achu has asked a question i am using achu itself here see achu sister is applying for the cancellation what the loss is closing stock lying with achu sister achu sister is deemed to have supplied this before she is cancelling the registration now come to 295 now you please come to 295 look at section 29 cancellation of registration come to subsection 5 what does it says every registered person whose registration is cancelled shall pay an amount by way of debit in the electronic credit ledger or the electronic cash ledger what equivalent to what equivalent to the credit of input tax in respect of the inputs held in stock inputs contained in semi finished and finished held in stock or capital goods or plant and machineries on the day immediately preceding the date of such cancellation or output tax payable on such goods whichever is higher there is a calculation they are saying until this point until this point it is reversal of input tax will be taken on the stock sir why sir when goods were purchased as a registered person you promised what you said these stocks are purchased for business or business furtherance that is why credit is granted to you correct or not yes sir if i have purchased for personal purpose sir this t-shirt this specs this mobile whether i would have taken credit no i would not have taken credit why because i am not using it for furtherance i am using it for my own personal yes. consumption my own purpose this is not business this is not business but but the stocks which is lying in the books of accounts as asset balance sheet says it's a current asset other than current assets that means it is procured for what purpose business purpose correct yes sir such assets on which credits has been taken was not sold kept as a closing stock logically tell me if you are a businessman you are having such closing stock what will you do 
you decided to close the business what will you do with the closing stocks sell the stocks even after the cancellation you will sell it right you yes, will try sir. to make money at least a recoverable net realizable value you will carry yes sir that is what law catches you that is why law wants to collect the tax from you it says first equivalent to the credit you reverse or if you have net realizable value on the output tax payable do it whichever is higher i will collect it from you now let us go for the chart representation to understand this better okay come no no here we go look at this cancellation of registration any amount is liable to be paid under section 295 we say 295 says you are liable to pay amount and you should read 296 because 296 very clearly says once again yeah here see 296 what does it say okay proviso they added and provided capital goods how they are supposed to do they have given and then look at subsection 6 the amount payable under subsection 5 shall be calculated in such manner as may be prescribed so how to calculate the amount to be paid or output tax liability is in the manner as may be prescribed so we are going for the manner as may be prescribed which is nothing but rule 44 or rule 40 accordingly so every registered person whose registration is cancelled on the day immediately preceding the cancellation shall pay an amount by way of electronic uh, no debit to the electronic debit credit ledger or uh, electronic uh, cash ledger with respect to the itc on the inputs held in stock wap finished goods on the preceding date of cancellation by way of itc being a or b whichever is higher what is a proportionate itc if you are able to calculate the amount or output tax payable whichever is higher my dear achu sister are you comfortable yes sir originally you have to connect the provision sister why 295 comes because of schedule 2 para 4 class c 295 exists and the logic is really resounding logic it is extraordinary it is not harassment people without understanding this calls gst law as harassment what is harassment here you have taken the credit promising that you will sell even mark my words eventually you will sell eventually you will sell see as a businessman you will try to minimize the cost or you will increase the profit either of this you will try to do it or not as a businessman will you do this or not my dear tell me yes sir so obviously you will go for realization obviously you will go for realization up a definite you will get to have transaction value net realizable value so that net realizable value sir output tax payable how i will arrive sir law does not say common sense approach it is net realizable value multiplied by gst rate guys are you all with me this will be given in the question itself they will say the pro- if at all this product is sold it would have been sold for 5 lakh okay sir if at all i don't want to, if at all i want to what is the other comparative figure comparative figure is based on whether invoice is available there or not if invoice is available proportionate basis to the invoice if invoice is not available registered person has to estimate and that has to be certified by a practicing chartered accountant i'm sorry it has to be certified by a practicing chartered accountant we have <coughs> currently now i am in future <coughs> <coughs> you guys also will certify the same this is in case of inputs held in stock finished goods and and wap in case of capital goods we have to go this way we have to go this way what you have to do sir unutilized itc in the remaining useful life of the asset keeping on a pro rata basis keeping useful life as 5 years or transaction value net realizable value tax payable whichever is higher you are liable to pay this wordings you need to carefully you know decode input tax credit involved in the remaining useful life that means what is a useful life for that answer is given the last line taking useful life as 5 years and since here they are saying in months here this is also we will convert into months 5 years means how many months here yeah? 60 months are uh, 
everybody yes sir <coughs> yes sir i am telling you don't be like a namuthu pona patase okay don't be like a what to say uh, the fire cracker which has got drenched in water okay be like a 10000 wala cracker ready to burst at any time kada 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 participation you should be there yeah come on so remaining useful life in months shall be computed on pro rata basis that means how many months after its procurement you have used you reduce it from the 60 balance month proportionate sir how to arrive at sir let me give you an example so that you know you can do this <coughs> mr x purchased a capital goods on 31st may 2018 for rupees 10 lakhs an order of cancellation of registration was passed on 19 3 2019 calculate the amount of capital goods to be you know amount to be paid on capital goods purchased in accordance with 295 my dear brothers and sisters don't consider the sale first arrive at this particular figure you tell me what is the useful life oh these are the steps you have to follow first we will go for this okay section 295 hyphen capital goods <clears throat> look at this useful life of the asset is how many months everybody <laughs> 60 months what is a date of purchase what is a date of purchase what is a date of sale 2018 31 may 2018 right 18 what is a date of sale or oh, date of cancellation i'm sorry not date of sale date of cancellation date of cancellation is 19th may march 2019 90 so my number of months used number of Ten months used tell me how many months i have used 10 even part of a month will be considered as a month now tell me how many months i have used 10 10 or 11 10 or 11 11 31st may 2018 is one day in may isn't it even yes, one day is in a month will be calculated as what one month one month part thereof part thereof part thereof so 11 months i have used now it is a big ramanujam mathematics calculation what is the remaining useful life unutilized <coughs> very difficult mathematical calculation 60 minus 11 49 and my dear in this problem they have assumed what is the rate of tax the rate of tax is assumed as 12% the rate of tax is assumed as 12% so 12. what is the itc involved here itc involved is very simple 10 lakhs multiplied by 12% 1 mm. lakh oh oh 1 lakh 20000 now proportionate itc <coughs> proportionate amount to be paid why sir i have to pay this amount because i am cancelling i am not using the capital goods for the desired period of 5 years before that itself i am getting cancelled so proposed amount to be paid on account of capital goods on cancellation is 1 lakh 20000 itc divided by 60 multiplied by 49 i will end up paying 98000 my dear brothers and sisters are you comfortable <coughs> everybody yes sir see this this is what this is what actually this is a and i can also have b here what is b b is a transaction value based taxation correct ah which i told you net realizable value multiplied by gst rate See exam la you are not supposed to write net realizable value. Exam la you are supposed to write uh, transaction value. You are supposed to write a uh, transaction value into GST rate. Uh, in this question they have given the transaction value. Case one eight lakh. Case two nine lakh. My dear, I have two cases. Case one and I have another case. Oi. Case one eight lakhs. 
case two, nine lakhs. And what is the GST payable? Ninety-six thousand. First case ninety-six thousand. Second case one lakh eight thousand. Tell me, my dear. In case of case one, what is the amount to be reversed for capital goods on account of cancellation? Achu sister, you have to tell me the answer. It is A or B, whichever is. Yeah. Very yeah. good, Achu sister. In yeah. case of case one, I will end up paying ninety-eight thousand. Everybody. And in case of case two, I will end up paying how much? One lakh eight thousand. One lakh eight thousand. One lakh eight thousand. That's it, guys. Are you all comfortable? Yes, Everybody? yes, sir. Right. yes, sir. This is a standalone four mark area again. This is a standalone four mark area. Market important. Are you all comfortable? So that marks a completion of a beautiful chapter called registration. My dear brothers and sisters, all the aspects of registration has been thoroughly covered now, including any other doubts in this chapter, right? So I am mopping up. Any other doubts? Any other questions? Any other, my dear brothers and sisters, any other questions? Shall we go to tax invoice, debit note, credit note, and cover up the amendments there? Yes, sir. Yeah, here we go, my dear. Sir. Here we go. Let's go for the focus area. Where is the focus area? Here. See, tax invoice, debit note, credit note. What happens? Or give me some updations, guys. MCQ can come from consolidated tax invoice. I predict somehow. And uh, e-waible, there is a question. There is an RTP question on e-waible question number six. We have to discuss on RTP question. And also there is an e-invoice question, which is you know uh, e-invoice applicability. For whom e-invoice is not applicable, that limit is extraordinary. So let's quickly go ahead and knock down this area. First e-invoice, my dear brothers and sisters, current affairs. You, I am sure you all will be using different apps. Tell me what is the threshold limit for e-invoice? You all will be involved in current affairs. You would have heard about this news. Uh, Twenty crores. Excellent, excellent sundaration, excellent sundaration. Exam ke twenty crores jaldi na mark pe no. For your exams, the threshold limit for e invoice remains at fifty crores. Remember, this is one of the big challenge because we are living in a social era. What a teacher teaches more than social university teaches you, right? So you have to be careful. Ignore the current affairs. Focus from the examination perspective. Focus from the examination perspective. E invoice, my dear. I am going for tax invoice, debit note, credit note chapter. And here, I, here we go. We open up to the first question. Sir, invoice needs to be issued by whom? That's a common sense approach. And here we go for tax invoice. The manner of issuing the tax invoice, my dear brothers and sisters. Originally, it was e invoice was mandatory for only 500 crores. And thanks to CBIC website, this is the table which I have borrowed from CBIC website. Okay, <clears throat> I have to really thank CBIC for giving this summary in their portal, and I have borrowed it from there. See CBIC, they always used to, you know, run the screenshots. Oh, oh, oh. Like this, see, CBIC. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Oh, this is they are going for over here. Now look at this, my dear. Can you see now? Can you see there is a screenshot which is moving around? Hello, my dear. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see how colorful, how beautifully they are doing? How beautifully you know they are highlighting the changes in customs and all those stuffs. Huh? From this kind of screenshots only, I have taken one such content which is basically. You know uh, our area here. This is one such content, so I have to really thank uh, you know CBIC for that. Now look at this. Initially, when this was introduced, the people said 500 crores. Then they brought it down to 100 crores. Then they brought it down to 50 crores. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, please understand. Please understand. It has come to 20. 
20 crores. Mark my words, another one year it might even touch 5 crores. Mark my words. For our exam now, what is the criteria? Ask a question. Whether suppliers aggregate turnover in the financial year, does it exceed 50 crore? Is it up to 50 crore? Yes, then manual invoicing. Goods got 3 copy, service got 2 copy. No sir, it exceeded 50 crores in any of the financial year starting from 2017-18. Any financial year it has exceeded 50 crores. Then e-invoicing, only one copy e-invoicing portal. But this is not applicable to some cases. To whom and all this is not applicable. To whom and all this is not applicable. Guys, very simple. <coughs> Look at this, to whom and all this is not applicable. For insurance company, banking company, financial institutions, NBFC, this is not applicable. For goods transport agency, this is not applicable. For transportation of passenger service provided, this is not applicable. Service by way of admission of exhibition of cinematography films and multiplex screens. Nothing but our multiplex theatres. Inox, PVR, Satyam cinemas, we are going. No, those kind of theatres, they are not supposed to do. SC is a units. SC is a developers, this is applicable. SC is a units, this is not applicable. Government and government department and local authority, this is not applicable. And any other person has may be notified by the government. My dear, in this, I want to have a special mentioning. First four category people, they are also relaxed from issuing a normal tax invoice. Let it be e-invoice. Sir, if this e-invoice is not applicable, nah, whether they are bound by manual invoice is the next question you should ask me. Correct or not? Logical then? Yes, sir. If these guys are not bound by manual invoice. Are they bound by? If they are not bound to issue e-invoice, are they bound by manual invoice? That should be the question, right? They are also not bound by manual invoice. They, if they want, they can issue manual invoice. If not, some other document will be treated as what? E-invoice. Uh, invoice away we will treat. Uh, what is that, sir? Rule 54. Special provisionings. Come here, my dear. <clears throat> Look at this. Tax invoice in special five cases. Insurance, banking company, financial institution, NBFC. That is what marked as IE, insurance, BC, banking company, FI, financial institution, NBFC, non-banking financial institution, GTA, goods transport agency, TOP, transportation of passenger, exhibition of cinematography, film and multiplex screens. Guys, think once again. See, today SIRC is providing you a class. How many students are here? Roughly around 50 to 100. Are you with me? Yes, sir. In, in this moment, in a bank, how many people will be there? Consolidate all its branches in Tamil Nadu. Not less than 10,000 people will be there in a branch. Correct or not? Yes, sir. When SIRC is serving 100, and if you come to my office, we will be dealing maximum with 10 clients at this given point of time. 10 clients maximum. Ours is a wonderful team. We are a team of 13. We are growing slowly. Am I, and and uh, it's to say an environment where if you want to grow with learning and uh, you know thought process of blissfulness. My team is completely energetic. And see... How much ever if, if I trust my team, I am sitting and taking classes for you guys and my team is working. No one will think that it is a work, it is their task. That is the reality with which we work. Sir, Apo, you will not uh, scold your people, sir, no. I'm, I tell openly to my boys, articleship is to do mistakes and learn. Do mistakes, but only one request. Do one mistake only one time. No. Don't repeat it. Smart people will not repeat it. And if you do new new mistakes, I have no ang I have no shouting, I have no angry, I have nothing for you. Your your the purpose of article ship itself what? That only right. If you know everything right, why you have to come for article ship? Correct or not? Think yeah. Correct? No. Apo, what is the liberty to do mistake is article ship. But it must be applied mistake. 
I'm really happy to encounter and encourage, but not repeated one. Okay, now coming back to the stream. Sir, for who, if they have done the mistake, who will face the client, sir? I am the corporate veil between my team and, uh, you know, my client. They can't breach this corporate veil. Sir, if good things happens also, this will happen? No. If at all client appreciates that work is good, straight away credit will be given only to the team. It is not mine. It is their hard work. So what is the work culture we have, sir? The work culture is whether a partner or article assistant, everybody is a same accountable to the client. No difference. Whether it is the senior partner or the junior partner or it is going to be the part, any other person or manager, no one. No one will be spared from this obligation. It's a simple thumb rule. When you take up a responsibility, own up to it. Let every word be accountable. Accountability. And I'm very proud and seriously blessed to say, I have a wonderful, you know, churning minds around me, which is extraordinarily, extraordinarily committed. I'm blessed to say, to, to have been among such a team members. Right. Coming back here, my dear. Now think of, my office will be dealing with 10 clients maximum at a time. And SARC is dealing with only 100 students now. Maximum. Bankers are dealing with thousands. Imagine goods transport agencies. Imagine transportation of passengers. Imagine a show. Imagine a show in a theater. How many people will watch and come? My dear, all these four service providers, if you identify one thing in common, did you observe? There will be a huge number of recipients when compared to others. Can you understand that? Yes, sir. Yeah, that is why law says for bankers, they need not give consolidated tax invoice or tax invoice. If they make anything available to download electronically or physically, that is sufficient. For a goods transport agency, if they issue a consignment note with all these contents, absolutely fine. It's enough for me. And if the if it is a transportation of passenger, if they issue ticket in any form, that's fine. I'll treat ticket itself the invoice. And when it comes to multiplex status and they invoice electronic ticket, that electronic ticket is deemed to be the tax invoice. Guys, MCQ area, are you all comfortable? exceptional one so these guys are exceptional not only to e invoice but also to the normal invoice are you all with me my dear everybody yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. right so let's proceed my dear so we are completing the first agenda which is e invoice and its exception my dear e invoice and its exception la, what we have to understand is few things have added One second, my dear. Here we go. Yeah. So, what is added is government department and local authority has been added from 1 6 2021. That's the latest amendment highlighted, underlined, block given in italics. Previous version of the book, if you take government department, will not be there. Now it is also added. So, government department, like you know, uh, and local authorities. That is to say, government department, when I say, say Tamil Nadu water. Water or Electricity Board or you know say TN uh, Tamil Nadu Civil Supplies or let us say for example local authority when I call Tamil Nadu Muns uh, the Madras Corporation these guys are not bound to issue they are not bound to issue mm -hmm. e invoice mm -hmm. guys are you all comfortable and remember a critical MCQ e invoice is not applicable to SEs in units but it is pretty much applicable to SEs at uh, developers MCQ area, MCQ area, MCQ area, market important. Are you all comfortable, my dear? Everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it clear? Is it clear? Hello? Yes, sir. Right, yes, sir. my dear. If that be the case, I completed with my first task. I am going for the second task. Consolidated tax invoice. Guys, consolidated tax invoice has been issued in two scenarios. Okay. Consolidated tax invoice will be issued in two scenarios. So let me take up the scenarios for you. See, first one, contents of tax invoice is there. In that, there is a proviso. There is a proviso which talks about this 
what is it? and also my dear i want to say contents of qr code is an important question mark it important contents of qr code is an important area mark it important mark it important mark it important similarly similarly hsn similarly hsn is a very 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 important thing you may be tested on an mcq here guys if your turnover is up to 5 crore in a tax invoice how much hsn you have to give see first understand hsn is a eight digit harmonized system of nomenclature eight digit numeric code eight digit number like you have all sro numbers yes, registration code do you have sro number SNL. Yes, sir. Yeah, why your name is not there? Because name na there will be lot of confusion. Sundar S na there will be ten Sundar S. Pooja na there will be ten Pooja. Instead S R O zero one eight four six sab na one eight four six will be only one number. अब अ कोडिफिकेशन हेल्प्स इन आइडेंटिफिकेशन सिंपली दैट इज व्हाई गुड्स आर आल्सो कोडिफाइड एंड दैट नेम इज कॉल्ड एज हार्मोनाइज्ड द सिस्टम ऑफ नॉमेनक्लेचर इट इज कॉल्ड एज एच एस एन हार्मोनाइज्ड द सिस्टम ऑफ नॉमेनक्लेचर हाउ मेनी डिजिट्स Eight digit, eight digit number, numeric code, eight digit numeric code. My dear, if you are aggregate turnover in the preceding financial, look at the criteria very clearly. Aggregate turnover in the preceding financial year, if it exceeds up to five crore, if it is up to five crore, B to C no HSN is required to be given. B to B four digits is more than sufficient. And if your aggregate turnover is more than five crores, then you are supposed to give the first six six digits. And there are some fourteen and specified chemicals has been specified via notification of a ninety by two thousand twenty. If those chemicals are there, you are supplying. You are supposed to mention eight digit HSN. You are supposed to mention eight digit HSN. My dear brothers and sisters, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? My dear, I am telling you, marking sure. mark is very very important. Mark this very very important. You will get a question from contents of QR code or from HSN verification. Mark it important. Any doubts, my dear? Any doubts? Yes, sir. For the yes, sir. Sir, ah. Sir, if register person. Kuchh jo volume, kuchh jo volume hai dikonga. Yes, sir. If registered person supplies uh, more than five crores, sir, and if he supply to B to C. No That's difference, six digit. No difference. No difference, six digit. Okay, okay, sir. See, if you are more than five crores, irrespective of whether you are going to B to C, B to B, doesn't matters. Your product is your your product. You know what product, right? Yes, sir. You have to mention six digit. That's it. With me, my dear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And this was applicable from first of April. This was applicable from first of April. Okay. So that is very important. Now we are going for consolidated tax invoice. My dear, consolidated tax invoice will come in two places. Okay. First one, where sir? If the value of supply is less than two hundred, that is to say one ninety nine or below, provided. Three conditions are satisfied. What are the three conditions, sir? That is given in section thirty-one, subsection three, class C, class B. What is that, sir? No separate tax invoice criteria. Look at this. This is the no separate tax invoice criteria. The recipient must be unregistered, and the recipient does not require the invoice, meaning thereby they should not ask for the invoice. And finally, consolidated tax invoice has to be issued end of the each day. My dear, remember. If at all you are shouting against the black money, don't try to be a part of black money, sir. We never do black money, sir. No, you guys not. You need not make. But if you don't ask for invoice, you are actually contributing for what? Black money. As a consumer, as a buyer, know your right. You have to ask for tax invoice. Sir, how come you can say that, sir? See, I could treat. See, let's understand. You are going for a medical shop. You are asking, you are buying an amrita engine there. How many of you is asking for the tax invoice? You are going for a jewelry shop and you are buying a gulus or you are buying a small bangle which is around a five thousand or ten thousand rupees, and that shop wala says he is exploiting your ignorance. He says, 
சார் பில்லு போட்டா ஜிஎஸ்டி எயிட்டீன் பர்சன்ட் எக்ஸ்ட்ரா அடாப் பாவி திஸ் இஸ் பர்சனலி என்கவுண்டர்ட் இன் மைலாப்பூர் ஐ டோன்ட் ஒன் டு சே திஸ் ஜுவல்லரி ஷாப் நேம் லிட்ரலி ஐ மேட் ஃபார் நாட் ஆஃப் மேன் டே ஐ டேர்ன் அவுட் டு பி டீச்சர் வேர் ஆல்சோ ஃபார் எம் ஓகே பிகாஸ் ஜுவல்லரி ஒன் பாயிண்ட் ஃபைவ் ஒன் பாயிண்ட் ஃபைவ் ஜிஎஸ்டி ரேட் இஸ் வாட் த்ரீ பர்சன்ட் அண்ட் தட் மேன் வாஸ் சேங் பில்லு போட்டால் பதினெட்டு பர்சன்ட் ஜிஎஸ்டி எக்ஸ்ட்ரா வரும் சார் ஒன்றுமே பண்ண முடியாது சார் கவர்மெண்ட்டுக்கு கட்டினா சார் ஆனாங்க அப்படியா பில்லு போடுங்க அப்படின்னு then that fellow immediately took the cash memo and written i said i have a gst registration number put my gst registration number give me a proper invoice this is cash memo this is not invoice then he looked at me and said sir illa sir dhan bill dhan kudupo sir na vena idu kondu poi i will give it to the gst officer now do you think he will accept can we go and meet a gst officer now abdina sir no sir no enna sir what is a i myself a gst faculty for also the department for also the students for also the members why you are making fraud like this what you are going to achieve if you said if you put a bill extra 3% will come i would not have objected why the hell you said 18% because by saying 18% he wants to provoke a reply from the recipient i don't want noise i don't want invoice by saying by making him saying so you are generating what black money my dear let the buyer be aware of kv tempter please know your rights demand for invoice. demand for invoice you know right my dear so this is one scenario where consolidated tax invoice has to be issued each day are you all with me my dear is it clear yes sir yes sir the second scenario where consolidated invoice comes in is a different scenario which is 313 clause g come let's go this is the beauty this is the beauty what is that sir sir whenever a registered person is procuring from an unregistered person either under 93 or 94 they have to issue invoice as on the date of receipt of supply why sir because unregistered person unregistered supplier can they issue tax invoice who can issue tax invoice section 32 we all would have read who can issue tax invoice my dear registered person only a registered only a person, person authorized by the law can do sir i am a exempt supplier can i issue tax invoice no i am a composition scheme supplier can i issue tax invoice no so don't give an answer only a registered person a registered person as per law are you with me my dear everybody yes, because exempt supplier and composition yes, scheme supplier will issue what uh, bill of supply correct ah yes sir everybody my dear brothers and sisters focus here yes, that means my dear brothers and sisters i can't issue this i have to issue a self invoicing sir i have to issue the self invoice when sir end of a month for the entire month if i issue one consolidated tax invoice that is more than sufficient are you all with me my dear is it clear clear sir this this can be tested in mcq consolidated invoice frequency period if it is less than 200 rupees na daily procurement from unregistered person na monthly ko one consolidated tax invoice is sufficient clear my dear everybody mcq yes, area market important mcq area market important and then i am going to the next target area which is eweable my dear brothers and sisters i will straight away go to eweable sir yes sister so can you repeat what you said uh, last with respect to this consolidated invoice sister Uh, if yes my invoice to the value of supply is less than 200 consolidated tax invoice has to be issued end of each day so the frequency of consolidated tax invoice is each day every day i have to put for example sister i am telling you i am having i am i am going to venkateshwara boli stall there i am buying one boli and i am eating 20 rupee will be the bill who is asking invoice nobody is asking invoice but boli sweets and savories are taxable subject to gst right sweets yes, is 12% savories uh, savories is a uh, 5% taxable ah uh, different rate is also applicable how come this rates are applied uh, inclusive of tax it will be done 
so that venkatesh boli stall fellow will have all such sale transactions during the day how many sales happened less than 200 total worked around to 29800 very good 29800 is how much is for sweets how much is for savories no 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 nilaya highest rate so for example ena mixer supply dana i buy one bonda or i buy one mixer i buy one sweet mixer supply dana ma there is no compulsion there is no compulsion but and it will not be called so called one rate so it is two two or more supplies coming that's it okay typically since it is not fascinated for everybody being the same i can call it as a mixer supply it is not bundled in ordinary course of business so therefore i can pretty much call it as a mixer supply so what happens now i'll go for 29800 divided by 112 multiplied by 100 will be the value 29800 divided by 112 multiplied by 12 will be the gst payable this every day i have to raise a invoice to myself self invoice every day i have to raise my dear sister are you with me so this is consolidated tax invoice to be raised by the supplier 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 for supply of value less than 200 another consolidated invoice is there that is to be you know raised by the recipient for procuring from the unregistered supplier you are with me sister and this as a recipient monthly once for the entire month end of the month if you raise only one consolidated tax invoice it's sufficient is it clear sister okay, sir understood sir thank you sir everybody yeah just give me 2 yes, minutes sir. pass yeah just give me 2 minutes pass i'll be you know joining you that's the end of this particular area uh probably i would say guys okay now let's go ahead my dear i'm sorry now getting into this so we have done with this now we are getting into e waybill very very important e waybill where is the question sir applicability of the e waybill when e waybill is applicable when e waybill is not required okay what a wrong perception is doing around i just want to throw it away i will ask a simple question sir sita raman is selling goods on interstate whether it attracts e waybill yes sir yes sir so interstate interstate sale interstate sale is it compulsory to raise e waybill yes sir yes sir i am so sorry tat pathetically pathetically i want to say it is not the case everything have to go through a tremendous method of you know mechanism e waybill is not at all for supply it is for the movement of the goods first thing second it can be for the purpose of supply or otherwise then that there doesn't matter but only if the consignment value exceeds the limit specified for e waybill e waybill gets attracted and for that purpose i want to make it very clear intra state intra state intra state within the state limit within the state limit sir we have different limit for different states therefore in our examination they will not be testing you on intra interstate interstate if the value exceeds 50000 only which value which value which consignment value, value. Ah, if consignment value if consignment value exceeds if the consignment value exceeds 50000 only then i will go for what i'll go for what issue e of e waybill yeah. my dear brothers and sisters i am so pain to you know say this to you guys model examination one is over okay and last time also when i was correcting the model exam e waybill a lot of students are writing the answer saying interstate supply na e waybill is compulsory no see intra o intero 
you have to check for the threshold limit only when the consignment value exceeds this exception unda yes there is an exception if it is a handicraft goods or craftsman goods or goods sent to job worker outside the state see within the state again state limit applies for example tamil nadu take state limit is 1 lakh sir sita raman is sending the goods for job work within the tamil nadu chennai to kanchi puram i am spending sir i am sending sir very good what is the value sir 80000 sir oh along what is a consignment value it is value of supply plus tax there on put together how much 80 80000 sir sorry e payable is not required if i send it along a delivery chalan it is more than sufficient rule 55 very clearly says are you all with me yes sir hello yes sir Sir, yes, sir, but I have. I am sending the job work goods. I am sending the job work goods. How much? Yeah, ten thousand. Yeah, ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. I am sending the. Oh, I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sending the job work goods. Ten thousand rupees worth. Where, sir? To Karnataka. I am sending it to Karnataka. I am sending it to UDP. Oh, handicraft goods, craftsman goods, or job work. I am sending to another state for even one rupee. I require. A, I require. A, e payable it becomes compulsory so along with delivery chalan i have to definitely raise a e payable e my dear brothers and sisters applicability of e payable this is a widest misconception as a evaluator i have come across not as a teacher as an evaluator i have come across this majority of the students are writing interstate supply na compulsory refer the suggested answers given by icai you need not trust sita raman validate the source refer the institute study material anywhere in the institute ism are they saying interstate supply e payable is mandatory what is the problem sir we are not reading the we are not reading the ism instead we trust telegram group instead we trust google search say icai suggested answers here kada we will not read suggested answers now because we have to hans telegram group la somebody somewhere somewhere in the india will update you will read that icai given suggested answers no 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 i don't want it apparent mistake on record glaring on record and some of them are one step ahead they are writing if the value of supply is more than 50000 gone answer is gone because the key word what we expect is a consignment 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 and you have to work out and show me the consignment value how it you arrive which is value of supply plus taxes minus yes. earlier see uh, this is not a mathematical equation you have to understand see taxable supply na you have to take value of tax inclusive okay tax. let's let's say my dear you are sending 40000 worth of goods are you with me my dear you are sending yes sir 40000 worth of goods or let us say 45000 worth of goods you are sending tax rate there on us 5% okay let us understand question asks you to calculate okay let's assume it's a big lorry let's assume it's a big lorry and uh, in this there is a taxable supply 45000 and uh, of which 5% is a tax rate 2.5 2.5 percent is a tax rate you also have exam supply you also have exam supply the value of this is 20000 rupees what is the tax you will be paying for exam supply zero sir nil sir now what is the value of this consignment sir 27250 sorry my dear consignment value consignment value is 67250 I am not supposed to take this exempted value at all I have to take only taxable value and tax thereon sir then how come that equation came sir 
suppose the question says this lorry carries on this lorry carries on total value of goods being 65000 of which 20000 is exempted goods now you have formula application now consignment value equal to value of taxable goods plus tax minus minus exempt supply exempt supply because you have it there and here when i say value of taxable supply it is not directly value of taxable supply you will take everything because the question says 65000 and total so now you will go because 65000 is a total value we understand plus tax when i go for tax i know 200% 65000 minus 20000 is a exempted product on this only 5% i would have applied Minus twenty thousand, might be somewhere I would have missed the you know brackets in improperly. This is how it has to be, my dear. This is how it has to be. And if you arrive at forty-seven to two fifty, will be the consignment value. What is the whole objective? The whole objective is not mathematics. This minus considered as not to include. You are not supposed to include the value of exempted supply as consignment value. Very simple. Guys, are you with me? Is it clear? Clear, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, I have a doubt, sir. Yes, go ahead. Uh, sir, yes. sir, why we have, we are not including this exempt supply, sir? Because consignment means it will uh, increase of this twenty thousand also. But dear, for calculation dear, purpose, dear, why? To to appreciate that, you have to read E Bill is not applicable to when. See section one one <laughs> section sixty seven read with one thirty eight sub rule fourteen. Okay, leave the sections and all. Notwithstanding anything contained in this chapter, no e-way bill is required to be generated in the following cases. Can you read this, my dear? Yes. Are, are you with me? Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. In this, come to point number J, where goods being transported are exempted from tax. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Now tell me, for exempted goods, whether e-way bill is required? Ah. Okay, sir. Understand the spirit of e-waybill. E-waybill is brought for what? As a tax evasion check measure. On what goods tax is evaded? Taxable goods or exempted goods? Taxable goods. Government's Taxable. intention is to monitor which goods? Taxable. Taxable. That is why they are excluding exempted goods. Can you see this? Purpose, okay. purpose, purpose. they are materialistic government is materialistic sir can you prove this with one more example yeah registration chapter registration chapter la section 23 is ultra wise to the entire chapter of registration if you observe carefully section 23 la they will say appa the following person la not required to register yaar yeah, la when we check a person who is an agriculturist a person who is making exclusive supply of agricultural productivity a person who is making exclusive supply of exempt non taxable that means from all these category people government will not get any revenue if there is no revenue government does not want you so they want you to throw you out appa very clear government is materialistic are you with me my dear Yes, sir. Which goods movement la? There is a possibility of tax evasion. Taxable goods la. That is why all the exempted goods they said they don't want it. They don't want it. Mm -hmm. Evasible. Aya yeah, exempted goods. Government interest is zero. Yeah, pa tax is zero. नहीं आड़ चुको वित्त को पढ़ले आड़ चुको येन्ना वाला बनी को आदि एक्सेम्प्ट है नहीं साउंड आप दिंगे ना गवर्नमेंट विथ ऑल ड्यू रेस्पेक्ट्स टैक्सेबल प्रोडक्ट आ वा 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 आई वांट टू मॉनिटर यू आई वांट टू कैप्चर योर मूवमेंट डोंट चीट मी माय शेयर इज़ देयर यूर Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Very good. Very good. Excellent, my dear. So that is our. Oh, yeah. Next question. What's the next question? Sir, 
again just summarizing so you uh, you say uh, in a transport of goods even a taxable and exempted goods both carries that a, a taxable goods value consignment is above fifty thousand for intrastate it is required to be bill and above one lakh for only for taxable no uh, for no, intrastate no. for intrastate please refer the chart what I have said. For intrastate, oh, intrastate, please intrastate, refer. Intrastate, one lakh. One lakh. For intrastate, don't refer one lakh. For intrastate, please say respective state limit. Okay, respective state limit. Okay, sorry, I am referring to one lakh. Okay. Oh no, no, I am uh, telling you. See, I will tell you. Wait, wait, one second. I will one second, one second. Wait. I will give you a quick reference. Don't worry. Let my WhatsApp get loaded. Okay. Let my WhatsApp get loaded. I will show you one document. Since you have asked for, sir, practically whether this will come or not, okay? Arey Baba, jadu kara, wow, 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 load out. What is this? It's getting delayed. Uh. Oh, it's why it's coming. It's all connected. It's getting delayed. The WhatsApp got updated. That looks like it's not updated. Oh, it's not updated, huh? I have to switch on my WhatsApp here. Huh? I've done. What is this? Yeah, come quick, come quick, come quick. Don't waste my 30 seconds. Come on. Okay, Sri Ramlo, I'll, I'll do one thing. Or Sundaration, I'll do one thing. Okay, I will get you. Uh, it has come, ah, uh, one second. Uh, okay. Just I'm sharing, okay. We we used to share a lot of contents to our clients and on a regular basis. On a regular basis, we used to send. And here is something for you. Can you see this, my dear? Can okay. you see okay. Andhra Pradesh, what is the limit? Arunachal Pradesh, what is the limit? Assam, what is the limit? Bihar, what is the limit? Tamil Nadu, yes, what is yeah, the limit? Yeah. Can you see? Yes, yes sir. And did you note everywhere what did we mention when we circulate to our client? 50,000 rupees for all taxable goods. And that amount of 50,000 or 1 lakh is not value of goods. That is? Consignment. Ah, excellent Baba. That is consignment value Swami. That is consignment value. Are you all with me my dear? Is it clear? Yes, Hello, Sundaresh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pakka. Yeah. Now, now let's proceed, my dear. Now let's proceed. So that's uh, eWable. That's eWable for you. Applicability of eWable, my dear. Blunders are being carried out with misconceptions. I'm sure now you got cleared with respect to value, intra, inter requirements. Please, please be very clear. Please be very clear. It is an important area. It is an important area. There is a straight away four mark question is there based on the applicability. Right? So for intra, you have to refer to respective state movements. And if you are not known about the state movements, assume it uh, and assume it as 50,000 and proceed. Mm. And for inter, only if the consignment value exits. <laughs> Only then it is applicable. Is it clear, everybody? Yes, sir. And yes, sir. exception for that is handicraft goods and job work. If it goes to other state, if it goes to other state, even for one rupee, you have to raise there. Is it clear, my dear? Yes, Everyone? Okay. Let me quickly okay. carry out. So, agenda. Next agenda. Having covered e-wables applicability, what is the next one? Uh, e wables applicability we have covered and validity of the e wable my dear the next interesting area is validity of the e wable and the last area i would add upon is restriction restriction on e wable three things likely to be a question right my dear so second one of that is validity of the e wable let's go for the validity my dear here we go on the validity of the e wable guys EVA bill is valid for how much of distance? If it is a, if it is a over dimensional cargo per day 20 kilometers and for every excess or part thereof additional one day. 
and over dimensional cargo means what what do you mean by over dimensional cargo did i ask anything there is no point in memorizing over dimensional cargo let us have a look at over dimensional cargo my dear see this is called over dimensional cargo can you see beyond the structure beyond the body the content is protruding beyond front side la height la la it is protruding can you see that yes sir yes sir oh so this is this is what actually mean by over dimensional cargos beyond its ability it will carry so if at all anybody is obese and your your thighs are coming outside the chair then my dear remember you are over dimensional cargo we are stout we are fatty that means uh, we can run faster or we are run slow no we run slow we run slow only no very good that is why slower slower limit of a uh, 20 kilometers a day fit let us understand sundaration is fit like a pencil that fellow will run faster or slower fast faster that is why 200 kilometers earlier it was only 100 kilometers and now it is 200 kilometers goes on record to commendably commendably comment on the quality of roads government of india has developed in the recent years so now 200 kilometers a day one day has been given as a valid and for every extra 200 kilometers one additional day will be granted sir suppose from chennai to madurai i want to go 496 kilometers other than over dimensional cargo normal cargo how many days of validity 496 kilometers 496 3 days 3 days yeah very good but the 3 day will calculate from what day let us assume you have generated the e way bill now what is now 12th Uh, 29th March 12:42 PM. You have generated. It is its validity will be counted from the relevant date. Its validity will be counted from the relevant date. For this, you have to come to the Excel again. E variables validity. Guys, when did you raise? When did you generate the E variable? 29th March 2022. And what is the time you generated it? Twelve forty-two zero zero. Let us understand. Now only you generated it, my dear. When did twenty-ninth midnight zero zero comes? Twenty-ninth midnight. That is to say, after the generation of variable, that day's midnight. That means to say, I can say. Zero zero hours, or I can also say thirty three two thousand twenty two beginning time. Can I say this, my yes. dear? Can I say this, my dear yes, sir. brothers yes. and sisters? Yes, sir. Understand validity period. Validity period commences. Validity period. validity period for limitation for time limit for time limit commences from 0000 hours of 3003 2022 and my dear it ends on 24 hours from then that means to say 3103 hours oh my god something has happened no 3103 00 hours my dear brothers and sisters please understand this is this is to be considered as water this time gap is considered as water one day so essentially your validity expires or the validity expires only through the midnight for you are you all with me my dear so even though you generated on today now you generated 
it becomes see e waveable e waveable is valid e waveable effective it is effective from this time no doubt it is effective from this time no doubt but validity calculation validity expiry calculation ko one day is calculated on this pattern guys are you all comfortable it's very tricky but if you concentrate nothing great very simple try to generate e waveable early in the morning so that you will have a buffer of some 15 20 hours sir same sir same sir what will happen if i raise it in the this way sir that is to say i want to raise it a night 23 42 pm ka i have raised pa are you able to get it my dear it is effective yes. from 23 40 ana same thing will apply same thing will squarely apply appo what is the difference between the two timings sir nothing but buffer timing extra timing you get if you generate e waveable early in the day now tell me 496 kilometers other than over other than over dimensional cargo tell me when it is expiring when it is expiring after 3 days ha ah, calculate tell me the 3 days so many fellows come on Zero one, zero four, two thousand twenty two, and by this time, zero zero, zero zero, zero zero hours. So what happens, sir? Second day goes, zero zero, and third day is what day? Zero four, twenty two. My dear. this is the third day and this is the second day and this is the first day my dear brothers and sisters please understand e waveable expires on this time e waveable expires on midnight of second day april guys are you able to understand yes sir yes sir is it clear for you yes so this day to this day is one day this day to this day midnight is the second day and this day to this day will be the third day and at that time e waveable will expire are you all comfortable yes sir yes sir so i am completing the next agenda which is basically validity of the e waveable along with illustration now i am going for the last one which is restriction on e waveable guys quickly travel with me to understand restriction on e waveable focus here my dear this is a important amendment area rule 138 guys if anybody and again i am telling you current affairs will ruin you current affairs will ruin you from january from january if you are not filing gstr 1 and 3b for one month you are not allowed to file the e waveable this you would have heard in current affairs don't heed to it throw it out you should learn only what is applicable as on 30th 31st october 31st october 2021 as on that day my dear if anybody who is not furnishing the details of outward supply or was not supplying the was not furnishing the respective returns for the two consecutive tax period and in case of composition scheme supplier two quarters if they are not submitting the details then they are prohibited from submitting part a of the eligible tell me my dear without generating part a is it possible to generate part b no without sir so generating part a and part b can i issue eligible <laughs> No. Without no, issuing sir, no, e waveable, without and e waveable has to be issued when before commencement of the movement, correcta? Yes, sir. And now also go to time of supply chapter, time of supply chapter la along with invoice when to issue section thirty one subsection two read with uh, you know rules. What is coming to understanding before transfer, before movement of goods, invoice also to be issued, correcta? Yes, and sir. only when the goods are moved and delivered yes, sales will be complete correct see you go and buy a washing machine yeah washing machine is only delivered in your home you will be happy right yes sir 
அப்போ you are preventing me from the delivery eppadi you are preventing me from the commencement itself eppadi because you prevent me from issuing e bill how did i prevent because part a i was prevented from issuing that means typically i am stalling your business if you are not filing the gst r1 and gst r3 b i am stopping your business technically speaking are you with me my dear such yes, a serious sir. such a serious such a serious practical impactful amendment and now they have clarified this is applicable only for the this e-waveable restriction cannot be updated this is only for outward supply and not for inward supply meaning thereby sir i have not filed my gst r1 and 3b for the previous month can i accept e-waveable can i accept for my inward supplies can i generate e-waveable yes you can for my outward supplies can i generate sorry no so the restriction to update part a and to prevent e-waveable is applicable only for outward supplies and not applicable for inward supply inward supply see before amendment both inward outward is prohibited but after the amendment now only inward is prohibited outward you can generate this is the greatest benefit to the industry again mark this amendment very 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 important you might be tested you might be tested you might be tested are you ready my dear are you comfortable yes sir and that's yes, the, sir. that's the restriction for issuing eviable now my dear let's go straight away let's go straight away and try to check out aha yeah and i am trying to check out your rtp question number 6 is basically from eviable let us try to answer this eviable question Oh, even before that, there is a e-waveable question. Now, let's go ahead and answer this question. Which of the following statement is correct in respect of e-waveable generated for the goods for the month of February for which the order was cancelled? Once generated, e-waveable cannot be cancelled. No, my dear, e-waveable can be cancelled within? Within 24 hours. Excellent, Kana. Within 24 hours or before the interception and verification by the proper officer, whichever is uh, earlier. 24 hours alone is not the correct answer. 24 hours or before verification by the proper officer, whichever is earlier. So that answer has to be given. So in this question, nothing is spoken about introspection or you know verification by the proper officer. Therefore, we'll go with answer number B. Now I'm going to Mr. Shambu. Mr. Shambu, a trader registered under the GST in Delhi, is engaged in the wholesale business of toys of kids. That means he is a goods a supplier mr nandi registered under the gst in patiala a regular return filer supplies toy in bulk to mr shambu for selling to the end consumer so this is not this is not handicraft goods this is not craftsman goods this is not actually jobber they are only buying and selling in goods mr shambu is paying tax as a regular taxpayer in delhi he has not filed the gst or 3b for the last two months there you stand. Straight away restriction comes into the picture. And Mr. Nandi wants to generate e bill for the toys amounting to rupees 5 lakh. To be supplied by Mr. Shambu. Okay. Also, Mr. Narayanan from Jammu and Kashmir approached Mr. Shambu for purchasing the toys for 75,000 for the purpose of return gift for his son's birthday, first birthday party. Mr. Shambu wants to generate e bill in respect of the outward supply made to Mr. Narayanan. Examine with reference to the provisions of the GST law whether Nandini and Shambu can generate e bill. Tell me, my dear. First, Nandini. Can Nandini generate e bill? And can it be accepted yes, by Shambu? Yes, sir. Yes, after the amendment, I can accept the e-waveable with respect to? Invert supply. Invert supply. Invert supply. But can Mr. Shambu raise a, you know, e-waveable for 75,000 rupees? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Why? Because no, sir. it is with respect to the? Outward supply. Outward supply. Now, let's go and of check Mr. the answer. Come. Look at the answer. Look at the answer. See, this is our understanding and they are going to present in their language. Don't panic. If you write the content, you will get the mark. Restriction with respect to the e bill is made applicable to a registered person if he is not filing the returns in time for a period of continuous period of two months. And this has been relaxed in case of inward supply for the same. In the given case, Abdin, if you write the answer, full mark will be given to you. You need not reproduce the same way. But learn, read, put an effort, try 
to adopt this but i am not insisting on reproduction i am not insisting on reproduction but try to understand this rule 138e of the cgst rules what they are going to say they are going to tell the provision that's it 138 contains a provisions pertaining to blocking of e-waveable generation facility that is disabling the e-waveable generation a user will not be able to generate the e-waveable of gstin if the gstin is not eligible for e-waveable generation as enna da sonna de thirupi thirupi solrananga ignore that line rule 138e amended wide notification number so and so provides blocking of e-waveable generation would apply only for the default of the suppliers gstn and not for defaulting of recipients or transporters in terms of rule 138 a person paying the tax as a regular scheme who has not furnished the returns of the consecutive due tax period is considered as a defaulting person suspended gstn cannot generate the e-waveable yeah that is also another restriction however suspended gstn can generate the e-waveable as a recipient or transporter because only for the outward supplier it is blocked in other words e-waveable this is what the essence i have told you this is what the essence i have told you e-waveable generation facility is blocked only in respect of outward supply movement of the goods of the registered person who is not eligible to generate e-waveable e-waveable can be generated in respect of inward supplies of the said registered person guys check out check out check out check out check out did i given the same thing for you as an impactful amendment over here right yes. only thing i have presented in a tabulated form so that it is easy for you to understand they have given the as usual paragraph manner okay sir this notification no notification number sir don't panic my dear brother did i say any notification okay see i have given it because i am a faculty i have no choice okay you need not write as per the latest notification what they will say wrong huh? this is not latest notification na huh? are you getting my point appa always numbers are problem always numbers are problem if you want to have the immediate laboratory evidence no go and ask any sister who is sitting in the bus stop what is your age you will get a slap yena you are dealing with numbers so don't deal with numbers numbers are dangerous but it might be interesting i don't deny the fact okay <laughs> that i am leaving it to you Hmm? so let's go for the answer and check with the answer what is the answer says thus applying the above provision there will be no restriction for generating e waveable by mr nandi as mr nandi was making outward supply he is regular in filing the return e waveable generation is blocked in case of movement made by mr shambhu to narayanan as it is an outward supply movement of mr shambhu who has not filed the return for 2 months finally they have come to the conclusion of what we have understood but the way of presentation alone matters guys again i'm telling you don't panic on seeing this kind of presentation don't go behind numbers don't go behind mug up notifications notification number 15 don't do that and all not required okay ah uh, not at all required not at all required just to keep it simple just to keep it simple right as per the provision latest provisions of the gst law focus on the content not on numbers everybody are you all with me guys are you all comfortable yes sir yes sir so yes, sir. that's yes, it i have completed my agenda yes, on uh, two important chapters and i have covered registration and tax invoice my dear tomorrow i will i will be covering returns payments and valuation and last day i'll be covering input tax rcm and composition scheme supplier and if at all you want to ask for any doubts in exemption you know composition uh, composite and mixed supply chapter 2 and other areas you are open to ask me at any time and uh, my dear brothers and sisters do one thing do one thing if you have a doubt you can send your doubt prior to me this is my contact detail you can share your doubt you can share your doubt well in advance to me also so that i can send it to everybody i can send it to everybody so this is my contact number 9841413755 and this is the only number i have okay ah uh.